as you go about the book, you do something I've not seen and not just focus on work generally that God created us to work, which I find the most, most books do, but you've gone further, even, even to the point where you were dividing between the professional class and the, as you call the working class perspectives. Why, why is it important to differentiate? Because I've, I've very rarely seen anyone categorize it in that quite that way, at least recently. We used to have white collar, blue collar, is the terminologies, but it seemed like that's morphed now because we realize, hey, those terms can be pejorative. Um, how did you, or, or why is it so important to keep those two distinct? Yeah. Yeah, it's a good question. So a couple of things. One, having led different events and gatherings in this topic for years, um, I realized that there were a lot of doctors and entrepreneurs that were coming to my events, but very few people that were actually making the world around me. Very few, uh, you know, line cooks, uh, janitors, people that were actually shaping the world around me that were coming to our events. And I just had, uh, I would say in 2017, 2018, I had a little bit of a come to Jesus moment of saying, what has been our message of gospel and work and why is it missing the majority of workers? So I published an article in 2018 uh, for Christianity Today called God of the Second Shift, which actually my next book will be more about this. Uh, and it's saying, how, how are we missing the majority of workers in the faith at work movement? So since then, I've wanted to dive more into this topic. And I agree with you that there's not perfect terms in terms of white collar, blue collar, or pink collar whether it be professional or working class, but there does tend to be different perspectives and how I tend to notice how people are seeing their work. And I think it's helpful. So nobody fits perfectly into a professional or a working class context because all working class people have professional abilities and all professional folks have, you know, lots of, I think, hard labor that they're doing as well. So they're not perfect terms, but I do think they're important to think not everybody has the same assumptions that we're answering. And I think that the vast majority of the faith at work movement has only addressed professionals. So for instance, I'll give you one example of, you know, when we talk about Genesis one and two and the goodness of work, and this is our chance to cultivate creation and bring about cultural renewal, which is stuff we talk about sort of in reformed communities, right? That Yeah, if you're working as a greeter at Walmart or if you're hauling around uh, chemicals, this is not the way you think about your work, generally speaking, right? That tends to be almost like a proof text for people that already like their work and want to have a big impact for it, but it just misses the vast majority of people. So in the book, I put at least to I'm start, I want to start this conversation about, hey, there are people that have different kinds of work that are thinking about their work differently, and theology is going to shape and form our work a little bit differently. So anyway, I have these six perspectives, which we could get into, but it is really important to not assume that everybody feels and thinks the same way about their work, even in a church small group. If you have refugees or, as you said, PhDs from MIT, you're going to see your life and your work pretty differently, and it's important to listen um, to how people are understanding their work. I, I want to park on that. You you referred to it. I want you to draw that out. Those six principles that you're referring to. Yeah. So I don't know if I'll remember all of them, but I could give you a couple of them. So sure. for instance, like work identity versus communal identity was one of the contexts. Professionals tend to get a lot of their identity from their work and from the influence that they're having uh, in their community. And it tends to be that uh, working class communities get more identity from their family and their community. And so that's one reason why people, working class folks, don't come to these events because that doesn't sound like a fun idea. I don't want to do that on the week of the evening because I'm not actually like finding my sense of self-worth from my work. Work is good, something you're doing, something that uh, is incredibly valuable, but it's not necessarily the most valuable thing in your life as well. So, you know, that's one of them. Another principle I have is networks versus real work. And in professional communities, for instance, um, people tend to... Um, it tends to be working with networks of either management or, or networks of sort of professional influence. Working class communities tend to say, okay, that's fine, but we're really actually making the stuff of the world, right? We're doing the concrete slab for the sidewalk. We're actually serving the food. We are actually the backbone of America, like, right? right. These are the, the conversations that most people are saying, that's fine that you're doing whatever on your laptop with your latte, but I'm actually, you know, I actually am bringing, I'm bringing you the coffee beans on my back, right? So those types of things of like, how are you seeing your work, even in those two, they're pretty different. And I think Christian faith actually speaks really well to both of them, but we do need to think that we're, yeah, we're seeing our work differently. And in the book, I did try to highlight 
both professional and working class voices because they're incredibly valuable and both I think they're both important. Is is the fact that we have this professional class that has come about? I mean, that seems like a really modern notion of things. Not to say, say, say that there haven't been that historically, but I think the majority of people historically have been you work to survive. It wasn't work for fulfillment. That's right. That's right. So that is a much a much more modern notion for sure. You are right. You you worked to survive. You did what you needed to do. Right. So the idea that work is now principally even about fulfillment, there's a friend, his name is Andrew Lynn, wrote another interesting book called Saving the Protestant Ethic. But he said that a lot of the faith at work movement grew up to help professionals answer the question of meaning. <laughs> so I'm not thinking that's not the whole story, but there is a lot there. And I think actually both professionals and working class, I think everybody asks questions of meaning because everybody asks questions of purpose. But nonetheless, I do think there needs to be a broadening of how we're talking about stuff and then overlapping with conversations about biblical justice, about workforce development, conversations that are happening in other areas that have, of course, going on for a long time, that faith and work people and people that are thinking about biblical justice just got to have, have, have more overlapping conversations.